Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to the Misadventures of Tron Bon. Today, after having completed the introduction mission, uh, we're basically going to... Uh, this video is going to be about setting ground rules, basically. I'm going to talk a little bit about the game itself, and um, explain some things where I don't have to explain them later. Um, so hopefully that is all right with you. There's not going to be any missions done in this video. Hopefully it won't run too long. You could actually, if you know anything about the game, probably skip this. Or skip to the end where I start actually talking with the serve bots. First thing you want to do, hit square. It labels the serve bots. That's invaluable because there are 40 of the little bastards and they all look the same. Uh, So, anyway, let's talk a bit about The Misadventures of Tron Bon. It is a prequel to Mega Man Legends. It came out in 1999. It takes, like I said, takes place, I think, right before Mega Man Legends, actually. It was released in between Mega Man Legends and Mega Man Legends 2. If you bought this game, it actually came with a demo disc. I do not have the demo disc. As far as I know, this game actually does not emulate, so you have to play it on a actual uh, disc. As you can see, I am, because I just went into my PlayStation uh, button menu by accident. Ugh. So anyway, uh, the purpose of this game is to go on to missions and make money with the, the, the goal of getting enough money to pay back Loathe to rescue Teasel and Bon Bon. Now, there are several different missions. Uh, the most the easiest to uh, to talk about is probably the action missions that we've already we've already done an action mission. That's where you're in the Gustav and you go around and you shoot things. There is also uh, puzzle missions and RPG missions, which that's not a really good description of what you do in there. Uh, mostly the RPG missions are exploration. You go around a maze in a little robot with no weapons. And you just, you know, you look around and, you know, there, there's not very many Reaver bots and it's just pretty laid back. Might have to solve a few puzzles. But anyway, let's talk a bit about the serve bots themselves. This, by the way, is scouting. Scouting is something that you should do in between each mission. Every time you complete a mission, any serve bots you have out scouting will come back. Uh, there are three stats. You have attack, speed, and brains. For the purposes of scouting, you want a surf bot with high brains, if at all possible. I'm actually going to be sending this guy out because I have nothing to sell. Uh, if you send a surf bot out, they are not available to be used on any upcoming missions or if they have a special ability such as the surf bot I'm sending out now. And one of the main reasons I'm sending him out is so I can demonstrate this is that if you send a serve bot out with a special ability you want to use uh, they are unavailable so if I had items to sell I could not sell them because my appraisal serve bot is gone for the most part it's not a real big deal you just push it off until the next mission or you go into the uh, Nakai ruins and then immediately come out, back out and all of your serve bots have come back. It's not a real big deal. Just be somewhat aware of who you're sending. So... Oh yeah, uh... Well shoot, I was going to explain the, uh, the stats on the serve bots. I can do it here. Uh, you can talk to the serve bots. In fact, I actually want to talk to number one here. You can give them items. Uh, you can look at the individual serve bot stats. And you can look at a list of stats. A list of all the serve bots. Uh, the way the stats work in this game is, depending on what the serve bot is doing, they do different things. Number one is a sniper. And what snipers do is they ride in the Gustav with Tron. And the sniper stats directly affect how powerful your weapon is. Uh, different weapons have slightly different effects with the stats, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. For example, attack raises the attack power of your weapon. Speed raises your rate of fire. Uh, for the different weapons, brain does di brains does different things. Uh, for the search cannon, which is the only weapon we have now, it increases the gun's tracking ability, which 
I really never notice. But brains is really important for some of the later weapons because it's pretty much directly related to how well they perform. Uh, if if a serve bot is just following you around, uh, their stats work a little differently. Attack power uh, determines whether or not they have an attack if they don't have an attack skill. Some serve bots have attack skills. For example, number six there has a skill. Uh, when you max out his brains, he gets the skill slings, and that gives him an attack without having to max out his attack power. If he didn't have that, he would, uh, if a serve bot has three or four attack power, they throw bombs. If they have one or two attack, they just run up and they pester an enemy and climb all over it. Speed affects how fast the serve bots run. Obviously, higher speed means that they are able to keep up with the Gustav a little better. Uh, if a serve bot has one speed, they tend, they trip. They can trip and actually hurt themselves. Although, don't worry too much on the serve bots hurting themselves, they're immortal. Uh, brains, I don't know if it has an effect on any of the serve bots that follow you around. I want to say that it makes them pick items up in a wider range, but that could just be me completely speaking out of my ass. Uh, brains has other effects depending on what mission you're on, but for the most part, for missions, you want to concentrate on uh, attack power and speed. How do you raise those up? Well, you, well first, let's talk to number one, because he has an item we want to get. I'm not going to talk to every serve bot. They don't really all have a lot of interesting things to say. The serve bots are much more interesting on the missions. But anyway, we got the strategy notes. Alright, if you go to the gym, you can actually train up a serve bot. Right now, they severely limit on what we can do. We only have there's two training courses in the game, one that raises attack power, one that raises speed. Right now we only have the attack power one, and we can only train serve bots one through eight. After we get the first million zinni, uh, it opens up you can train any of the forty serve bots. At this point I recommend uh, you concentrate on one Just get you two or three serve bots and you know max and get their attack power up to three. Uh, for the, I could try. In fact, you know, let me go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and train him as a sniper. I'm gonna be very quiet while I do this. This takes a bit of luck, and if I fail, well, you have to do. Uh, basic rules of this is it's a target game. To uh, you have to go through three levels. Each level, you have to hit five more targets than the previous level. You have a minute to hit all the targets. Some of the targets are worth two points. Some of them are worth one point. Some of them give you a power-up to shoot a bazooka. To hit the stuff in the back row, you have to jump using the X button. Uh, you can catch the bombs that the surf bot in the front row throws by uh, hitting the X button. In fact, you should do that. Try and hit two targets at once. Ah... Sometimes, if you go if you go left or right too fast, you actually ooh bazooka. Ah, that sucks. Curry actually freezes the timer. Those are Lex Loathe targets. They actually are worth two points. The regular policemen are worth one point. Uh, the targets of Glide are worth one point. And there's another policeman. It's a policewoman 
Uh, she will appear in one of the missions. She's worth two points as well. So there's three different two-point targets, and the rest are worth one. Uh, the bazooka targets are actually worth points. So you should... There is a lot of two-point targets on this map. Clear the screen out here. Ah! If you get hit by a bomb without catching it, you actually, uh... Seems to be doing pretty good while talking here. It's the next one that's really going to get me. There is a certain factor of luck in this uh, minigame. Depending on how many uh, two-point targets you get, it makes it a lot easier or harder to actually uh, get the points you need. Ah! hate it when he does that. Ah, I'm probably going to fail this one. Oh yeah, I'm going to fail. Oh, another bazooka. Ah, yeah, I'm going to fail. My curry got destroyed. That sucks. I might have stood a chance if the curry, uh, if I had gotten the curry, but it blew up. So, no. You can try uh, an individual level as many times as you want until you get it. You have to beat three rounds in a row to get the stat game. So. For the most part, I'm going to be doing this completely off screen. I just wanted to do it straight. There, like I said, there is a bit of a luck involved in this. Damn it. Freeze the time. Come on, I can get five points. All right, I got it. Woo! That was close. I am really, really bad at the mini games in this game, uh, specifically the speed one. I can do the attack power to four one, uh, which is the same game. You just got to hit more targets, but there is a heavy, heavy luck uh, component to it, and I just usually don't bother. Uh, scouting, by the way, is very, very important. You should always do uh, do it. And uh, send a surfbot with a three or four brains. Uh, they bring back better items that way. Uh, there are some items that can only be gotten through scouting, specifically cubes and a lot of uh, uh, the cubes raise the stats of the surfbots. There's one for each of the four stats, and then you know, etc. So anyway, uh, before we go, let's go to the meeting room do one more thing. Now, uh, a lot of the Servbot stats are, at, uh, excuse me, hidden skills are actually uncovered by raising their brains and sometimes their attack or speed. Uh, but there are a few Servbots that you actually have to give items. This is one such Servbot. And 
and he unlocks the strategy skill. Uh, just basically, he gives you advice. I know how to play the game, so he's useless to me. Uh, I like talking to 35 here, because Tron gets mad at him and he runs away crying. But anyway, uh, let's see, is there anything else I want to do? I could show you the storage room. And then, anyway, the storage room, this is where you sell your items. Uh, you want to talk to number four. Alright, and since we've sold, uh, we've sent our other guy off, uh, well, can't sell anything. Don't have anything to sell anyway. The lab is where you upgrade your Gustav. And you buy uh, healing bottles. Uh, one thing to note, you can actually purchase. If you buy these parts, what it does is it actually gives uh, the serve bots in this room their development skill. Right now, the only one with a development skill is 33, and his is bottles, which basically are health potions. So, uh, what you want to do, instead of purchasing these uh, parts is you actually want to uh, just take them on a mission and uh, that'll get them their uh, skills. So anyway, next time on The Misadventures of Tron Bond, with all that out of the way, we're going to a mission. I hope you're excited because I am.